today we're going to continue with our discussion on how to create a content knowledge instrument. And we're going to be talking about constructed response items, starting off with fill in the blank short answer items. So when we're talking about constructed response items, they're really on a continuum, starting with fill in the blank short answer with our shortest responses, going all the way to extended response essay type items. So it's not super important to me that you make this clear distinction between what's a short answer and what's a extended response essay and kind of what's in between. Um, but I'll kind of go over some general guidelines for each set. So the first one, um, a short answer should require only a word or a phrase to answer. It's constructed response. And this might include math problems, including both fluency and word problems. So things like two plus two, and also if Sally has five apples and Sarah eats three of them, how many apples are left? Um, so it can also, it can be complete a sentence, like the name of the president who signed the emancipation proclamation is blank and answer the question, which president signed the Emancipation Proclamation. When you have a choice between these two, a question is more clear. So when possible, try to frame these short answer fill in the blank questions as a question, because it's clearer for students. It puts, um, it's easier for our English language learners and our students with special needs to answer these questions. It makes, um, it's again, it can be a difficult question without being a tricky question, as it said it is a question versus a complete the sentence. However, most of what we'll focus on in this lecture are the complete the sentence types of items. So some advantages of these types of items. Um, it's um, more challenging because we're not just trying to recognize an answer, but you're having to generate that answer themselves. Um, it can help identify pure misunderstandings. Um, and it's less tricky because there's no distractors for students. So it's really that kind of more pure of what they know. And they're a little bit easier, less time consuming to write because you're not having to come up with those distractors. Some disadvantages, um, they do take longer for students to answer than just circling the correct answer. Um, and misspelling can provide invalid results. So they knew the answer, but they didn't know how to spell it, or their handwriting so bad that you can't read their answer. So there could be some invalidation there. They're less subjective to score in that way. So how do you define what the correct answer is? However, these are still more objective than something like an essay question. So they take longer to assess. So here are some guidelines. Um, paraphrase sentences from the textbook and other instructional materials. How many of you guys have had a test where someone has taken um, an item, a sentence straight from the textbook and just erased a word and had you fill it out? Turns out textbook sentences are written to make sense in context, but not as items in a multiple in a uh, sentence completion test. So please rewrite the sentence yourself to make it make sense on its own. It doesn't work to just pull a random sentence from your textbook. Um, here's an example. Um, born in the blank, Christopher Columbus under the auspices of the blah, 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 right? Or Christopher Columbus was born in the country of blank. So again, it, the second one is so much easier to understand, right? Um, one word, word sentences, there are only one brief answer is correct. I always like to say that you should answer your questions like a sneaky seventh grader. So think about how the most sarcastic, sneaky kid would answer this question where it would still technically be right, even though it wasn't the answer you were looking for. And that's the trick with these open response items is that sometimes there's just a lot of ways you could answer. So the oldest European settlement in the United States was blank or the oldest European settlement in the United States was located in blank, or the oldest European settlement in the United States was located in the city of blank. So the first one, I could say the oldest European settlement in the United States was pretty, beautiful, old, right? All of those things would technically be correct. Or I could say in the second one, it was located in Florida. So that would be correct, but if I was looking for the city name, then it wouldn't be correct, right? And again, all of these problems would be solved by said, what city was the oldest European settlement located, right? Um, put the blanks at the end of the sentence. This helps with um, parsing the meaning, especially for our English language learners. It just makes it, um, and our students with exceptionalities, it makes it easier for them to understand what you're asking. So the name of the president who decided to have the bomb dropped in Japan was blank. Or in 1945, blank decided to have the atomic bomb dropped in Japan. 
So in the first one, automatically from the very beginning, we know we're looking for the name of a president. That helps the student understand what you're asking. It helps it be less tricky while still being difficult, still getting at what you're asking for without being too tricky. Um, if the answer is in numerical units, specify the unit required. Um, the only exception would be if you're asking them to convert units or if you need them to know. So if I say, um, find the area of the square that's 12 inches by 12 inches, and you really want them to know that the answer needs to be in um, inches squared, then you might not want to provide that. But other than that, you really want to make sure that you tell them what you want. So for example, if I, um, if I don't say how many inches long I want, then a student might um, convert into feet or miles, and that may just make it a lot more confusing for you to grade. Um, do not include clues to the correct answer. So things like a or an, his or her, um, in that sentence, or the number or the length of blanks. So um, a word that describes a noun is an. By having that an there, then I kind of know, well, there's only one part of speech that starts with a, with a uh, with a vowel, so I know it's going to be an adjective, right? And um, then this one, like Washington D.C. is the capital of blank, the blank, blank, blank. I know, well, hey, that's the United States of America because there's so many extra blanks there, right? So we want to say, um, or like she wrote the classic book Frankenstein, so that she, instead of saying the author of the classic book Frankenstein was, by kind of those are all inadvertent clues to the correct answer. So you just want to try to avoid those types of things. Um. Again, if we can make it a question rather than a fill in the blank, we're going to be so much better off. It's going to be less tricky, right? Tricky, we want it to be difficult without being tricky. Over and over again, I'm saying this, but again, difficult without being tricky. So by saying, what city is the Alamo located, that's better than saying the Alamo is located in the city of Blake. Okay, so that is how to write um, fill in the blank questions. If you have any questions about how to do this, please send me an email. I'm happy to chat with you. Other than that, have a great week, guys. Bye.